And with us now in studio, Margaret McCain, philanthropist with the Margaret and Wallace McCain Family Foundation. And we're delighted to welcome you to Upper Canada and <laughs> to you, TVO. You. Uh, you're former Lieutenant Governor of New Brunswick, and I wonder, how do you address a former Lieutenant Governor? Um, you address me as Margie. <laughs> I don't think I can do that. <laughs> oh, yes, you I can. I don't get to call you Your Honor anymore? <laughs> no, no, no okay. more. Well, you were that. You were mm -hmm. Chancellor at Mount Allison. You've done a ton of things, including running this foundation, and you've decided to donate $10 million to mental health mm -hmm. uh, aimed at kids. How come? Well, um, I can back up a little bit. Uh, our family foundation has a, a chosen a mission. We're solely focused on early child development, which, uh, if you know the upstream, downstream story. Go ahead, tell us. Okay. The, uh, the story is of a psychiatrist who stood on the banks of a, of a river and saw the bodies of children floating by. It's a terrible image. The bodies of children floating by. And he had a terrible choice, a terrible decision. Do I jump in and see how many I can save? Or do I go upstream to see why they're falling in the river? Hmm. So I started out downstream, uh, involved with uh, um, spousal violence, family violence, uh, got involved with the research center. It became my mission when I was Lieutenant Governor. Uh, child abuse. And when I was there, that's when Dr. Fraser Mustard uh, grabbed me and pulled me upstream hmm. into early child development. If we're really going to do something to prevent people from becoming violent, because we now know they're never born violent, their early experiences uh, alter their behavior so that they begin to show, some children begin to show violent tendencies. So Fraser pulled me upstream into early child development, which was a mission of his and which I have inherited. I've been floating on the tail of his kite ever since <laughs> for 15 years. He was a legend, wasn't he? He just he died, the, what, the last November, I last guess? Last November. Yeah. So he gave me a mission, and uh, our family foundation adopted it. Huh. Do you know what the money is going to be used for? So the money, the money is a downstream uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. Because no matter how good the system that we hope to create, and I'll never see, probably live to see it. Uh, it, even though we aim for high quality and that's our goal, uh, it'll never be perfect. And there will always be, there are today, there will always be children who uh, fall through the cracks, need uh, help. Uh, and with children uh, and youth mental health, it's, uh, mental health itself is underserved, undervalued, under-researched. Children and youth mental health is even more so. So we're addressing uh, this downstream initiative to help those that fall through the cracks because ultimately, what is our goal? To help children become the best they can be, to help them reach their full potential as productive citizens, fulfilled, happy adults. What do you mean you're not going to live long enough to see it? Am I allowed to say how old you are? Oh, yes, you are. I am? Oh, yeah. You're 77, aren't you? And a half. <laughs> you look fabulous for 77 and a half. Thank so you. you're going to live plenty longer, and you will get to see I hope so. the I fruits hope so. of your labors, I, I suspect. So. But uh, uh, in the meantime, um, every little drop in the ocean is important. What role do you think our governments uh, should have in the funding of all of this? Well, I could speak to early child development. Uh, our early overarching goal is uh, a publicly funded, publicly driven system for the public good, a high quality early child development system to begin to, f to fill the gap between uh, the end of parental leave and school entry. Do you think what they're putting in place here in Ontario does that? Ontario's made a big step forward, okay? They, they, what they're doing is the beginning, uh, full day, extended day kindergarten mm -hmm. with wraparound childcare. Now we need to address the two and three year olds and there is a plan in place in Ontario. In fact, the Pascal report would be the best blueprint for all Canada and all North America. If this is that good, what do you think the odds are on identifying and catching young children who exhibit mental health problems early, early. in the game? Look, very, very good. Provided we have, and then that's another area, provided we have high quality, well-trained, well-educated professionals, well-paid. Uh, if you have a universal system, it creates a catchment system. So you can, 
with good, good uh, professionals. You can, uh, A, give them the nurturance, the uh, nourishment, the TLC that they need, plus the stimulation through experience-based learning or purposeful play, but also high-quality uh, caregivers will be able to identify those children that have an issue, a special need, well, we've early. Got, we've got problems early. these days, though, right? We've got governments all over the world saying we need to bring in dramatic austerity measures. We can't be spending more money on anything. In fact, we're going to have to cut way back in many things. Uh, I know you want people spending more on mental health issues, but it doesn't look like that's in the cards in terms of our governments going forward. Fair to say? Uh, it would be fair to say, and some people would say that. Uh, there's another argument, and that is when, you, when you're really moving in and cutting back in society, you have to give something back. Investing in your people is the best way to go in any economic recession, and many economists will say that. Even if you have to borrow the money? Uh, you know, it really, it, we could help them show, show government how they can get bigger bang for the buck. And by investing in early years, you're going to, it's going to be uh, a lot cheaper to invest early than it is to wait until there are difficulties when they're 10, 12, 15 years old. So investing early is uh, a good investment. It's cheaper. And that's the message we've been taking to the really hard-pressed provinces because our, our foundation invests and works with policymakers mostly in Atlantic Canada today. So that's what the message that we're taking to Robert Giz and PEI, Daryl Dexter in Nova Scotia, uh, David Allward in, in um, New, Brunswick. New Brunswick, and then we're, we're going to Newfoundland. I'm going to Newfoundland on Monday. We're going to try and influence them. They have a little more money than the other provinces. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet you that message is received with open ears by the Premier, the Education Minister, the Youth Minister, the Health Minister, and then when you get to meet the Finance Minister, he or she probably says, um, I got a problem here. You know what? We've had them at the table and they hear us. It is cheaper to invest now with better uh, chance of success and returns. Better. Minister of Finance is totally on side in PEI, totally on side in New Brunswick, even though they're hurting, hurting mm -hmm. badly. But uh, they, they do understand, everybody understands it's, it, the most important investment is in how your people are going to turn out and how they're going to be able to produce down the road. Uh, you told us a moment ago about the moment when Fraser Mustard tapped you on the shoulder and said, I've got a mission for you. But the assumption is that everybody who is as committed on mental health issues as, for example, you are, mm -hmm. must have some family member or some very close friend in your background who mm -hmm. suffered from this and that also prompted your involvement. Is that, in fact, the case with you? One in five families are affected by mental illness or an addiction. Mm -hmm. It's inescapable. Uh, I can't say I have somebody directly around me, but am I aware? Have we had people in our, in our circle, in our sphere? Of course, everybody does. And that's been part of the explanation for your involvement? Not really. Uh, children, mostly, huh. is, is what motivates me. Um, um, children become youth, but uh, I, Fraser pulled me into the upstream prevention sphere. So providing what children, young children need is really my mission. Um, and this CAMH investment is hopefully to invest in children's mental health, those that have fallen through the cracks, invest early, better chance of success. I want to share some numbers that you no doubt already know, but with our viewers as well, about youth mental illness in Canada, because children do become youth. Mm -hmm. and, and these are shocking. 10 to 20 percent of youth are affected by a mental illness or disorder. The total number of 12 to 19 year olds at risk for developing depression is 3.2 million. One out of five children who need mental health services actually gets them. And Canada's youth suicide rate, we're told, is the third highest in the industrialized world. Mm -hmm. Those figures from the Canadian Mental Health Association and those are accurate and up to date. What do you think we know about youth mental health today that we didn't know, say, 25 years ago? We know a lot about the neuroscience uh, of early brain development, what happens in those first three critical years. Canada in also invests the least of all of the Western industrialized countries, according to the OECD, on early child development. We are at the bottom. So we have a huge void in investing in our people, human capital. Uh, a lot of those provinces that emerge in children, youth, mental health 
have come from very bad early experiences. We now know what happens to their brains, what happens to their learning, health, and behavior. We have a lot of science, growing science. It's solid science. Uh, we have a wonderful new institute starting at the University of Toronto, which will help uh, inform a, a lot of this, um, uh, these initiatives. Um, so, you know, I'm very optimistic about down the road if we can get policymakers to jump on side with us. They are in the provinces. They yeah. are coming in in the provinces. They are doing more. One of the things we did in our last early year study was give provinces a mark. And they've done a lot better in the last five years. So with very little money, they are moving forward. We could move faster if we had more federal support, but uh, anyway, we're happy with what's happening. How can we be at the bottom of the list with people like you, with people like Fraser Mustard, with others, beating the drum on this for years and years and years? That's a good, that's a very good question. And I think a lot of it has to do well with, A, we're not doing a good job of getting the neuroscience information out, but there's a culture in North America, a firmly embedded culture, that children under six is a sole prerogative of parents. There should be no state in intervention in there at all. It's just, this is the prerogative of parents. Well, we're not take, trying to take over the role of parents. Parents are in the workforce today and they need support. They need two things. They need high quality non-parental care, but they also, now with the new science information, the new evidence that we have, uh, children need the stimulation piece hmm. through purposeful play. Everybody I've talked to says that we are making great strides in removing the stigma of talking about, seeking treatment for, et cetera, mental health when you're an adult. How about when you're a child? It's just, I think it's pretty much the same. Uh, we, kn we know very little about children's mental health. We see their, their behavioral disorders, but I don't know as that's been classified as, uh, they just talk that about that, that's a bad kid. They don't talk about it as a mental illness or a disorder of some kind. When many, in many cases, that just comes from, it's not a genetic thing, it's not something they're born with, it comes it's solely a product of their bad early experiences. But we've just labeled them bad kids. Is that how it manifests itself most of the time in children, just behavior that you would consider antisocial? Usually, although I, I am told by professionals by, at, at CAMH that now uh, symptoms of biological disorders are sometimes emerging at a very young age now. And so now when they, when, with the research, they'll be able to intervene early and, and before a lot of damage is done. Hmm. You're, you're going to allow me one little smart-ass question here, aren't oh, you? Yes, you? Okay, yes. I get one smart-ass <laughs> question. You know there's been a foo-for-ah lately with uh, philanthropists giving money to organizations but then potentially wanting to have a bit of a say <clears throat> over how that money's spent. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, are you going to do that? Yes. No. You're no. not? Having said that, I'm engaged. Meaning what? Oh, uh, I'm interested. Um, they'll see my face. I have no desire to interfere in any academic area. That's a no-no. Your mother knows that too. <laughs> <laughs> so interested, yeah. but not directing. Yeah, yeah. and I, I can be a spokesperson. As you are here today. And I will. I, I talk about family violence. I talk about early child development. I will talk about uh, not labeling uh, people with mental illness. There's a lot I can do. Uh, and I can connect people together, too. Formerly, Your Honor, we're really glad you came to TVO tonight <laughs> to get this week started. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Margaret McCain. Support Ontario's public television. Donate at TVO.org.